Hello and welcome to Praying on Purpose. Today is Thursday, and so therefore we are going to focus on the what of prayer, the what of tefillah. Namely, we're going to take a look at the content of our prayers. We're going to take a look at everything from the definitions of the, word that we, the words that we say to try to appreciate a little bit of the context, all in an effort to make the experience of prayer more meaningful and more fulfilling. Now, you would think that since today is the first Thursday, we would start all the way at the beginning of the Siddur and slowly but surely work our way until the end. Uh, I would prefer, rather, to be a little less predictable than that. And so I declare from the outset that we are not going to be following any specific sequence. There's no particular order that we're going to follow. In fact, what I'd like to do this first Thursday is go all the way to the end of davening and take advantage of the fact that it is still the beginning of the month of Elul, and it is traditional throughout many segments of Klai Yisrael to recite Perich of Zion of Tehillim, the 27th chapter of Psalms, the David Hashem Ori at the end of davening. Some recite at the end of Shachris, Mincham of different customs, but I think it's fair to say that if you're listening, it's very uh, likely that you did, you have been reciting, you'll continue to recite the David Hashem Ori throughout the month of Elul and through much of Tishrei until the end of Sukkot. Uh, first of all, it's important to note that there's no clear reason, or there's no definitive reason, I should say, as to why this is. There are different explanations. Some of them are very insightful and offer up the offer us the opportunities for some very interesting reflections. So, for example, the Panam Yafos points out that there are 13 Azkaros, the 13, 13 times in Perach of Zion of Telem where we mention the Shem Hashem, the Shem Havaya, and this corresponds, perhaps, to the Yud Gimel Midas Rachmim, the 13 uh, different types, expressions of Rachmim, which, of course, make up such a very, very important part of the Elul and Tishrei experience. Uh, others point out that there are Midrashic allusions to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and perhaps allusions to Sukkot as well, uh, the Bedrash says, the David Shem Ori, Ori is Rosh Hashanah, Yishi is Yom Kippur. Uh, and there are other explanations as well. I think that just more broadly, if we think about the theme of the David Shem Ori, we could definitely find and identify some very, very important uh, points of reflection for this time of year. The David Shem Ori describes, the Perak of Tehillim describes an individual who finds himself in a very perilous uh, place, an individual who perhaps is heading out to battle, which is one of the examples uh, the metaphors or, or actual circumstances that is described by David Amelech, an individual who is facing the potential of, of mortal danger and yet declares at such a moment that he's able to find faith and peace and security by connecting to the Rabboni Shalom. And so therefore, even though there are many things around me that leave me feeling very afraid and very vulnerable and uncertain about my future, I am still able to achieve a sense of security and optimism knowing that I am in good hands. And to the contrary, one of the most famous psukim in this parak, and perhaps in all of Sefer Tehillim, Acha Shu'atim Hashem, even from such a place, David Amelech declares, I'm thinking about one thing only. I know that there are many, many things around me which threaten my survival, but Acha Shu'atim Hashem all I can think about is Shifti Bevez Hashem. All I can think about is my relationship with you. And I think that this is a very, very important way of, of relating to this time of year. We are preparing now for the Yom Neroyim, which is perhaps loosely translated the days of awe, a time of year in which we all feel very vulnerable, uncertain, afraid. There could be a certain mood of dread and terror, if you will. And the David Hashem Ori, which we recite daily, reminds us, you know, that's not the only message of this time of year. To the contrary, perhaps we need to find balance between a feeling, a sense of, of real concern and fear and worry about the uncertainties of the future but at the same time, feel a genuine sense of optimism and hope in being able to attach ourselves, to connect ourselves more meaningfully to the Rabboni Shalom precisely during this time of year. So I think as a, as a general approach, the David Hashem Ori fits. It, it, and if we don't think of it that way, we should make it fit because it really can set a certain very, very important tone and help develop a certain mood inside of our hearts and our minds every day throughout this very, very important transformational time of year. I would like to focus on the very last pasuk in Perak Chav Zayin. Kaveh al Hashem, chazak v'yameis libecha v'kaveh al Hashem. Loosely translated as, you should have hope, you should have faith in Hashem. Chazak v'yameis libecha, Hashem should strengthen you and give you the courage in your heart. And then we say again, v'kaveh al Hashem. And when you think about it, it seems that there is an unnecessary repetition within this pasuk. Kaveh al Hashem, have hope, have faith in God. He should strengthen you. And then again, v'kaveh al Hashem. So why do we say the Kaveh Hashem twice? Would it not be sufficient to just say it once? This is the question of the Malbim. And I want to share with you an incredible, insightful, and really very beautiful 
explanation that the Malvin offers in his commentary on Tilim. He says, you know, there's a difference between, between the concept of having faith in another person and having faith in God. He says, Hakivoi Lizula so. When it comes to the experience of putting our faith in another individual, ain hatikva tachlis la'atzma. Having hope, having optimism, attaching ourselves with a sense of, of, of yearning and, and making ourselves dependent on another individual, that is not the tachlis, that is not the objective. The, the, the goal is that I should find what it is that I'm looking for. So for example, if, I'm, if I want a job and I apply for a position, and I know that it all comes down to one individual. So I'm going to turn to this individual, perhaps, and I'm going to say, please, I'm asking you, give me a chance. Consider me. I, 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 you won't regret the decision. And so therefore, I turn to this individual. I put my faith in him. And I say, please. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the job. And, and so therefore, he says, the tachlis kivui who should lo yikava od. My goal is that I shouldn't have to put my faith in you anymore. I just want you to say, okay, you're hired. At which point I can relieve myself of having to feel dependent on you. I can say, okay, I got what, I, what I'm looking for. I'm very grateful. I appreciate it. And now I'm going to move on. And I'm going to stop feeling reliant on you, dependent on you. He says, There is a big difference between that and it comes when it comes to having faith in God. When it comes to having hope and faith in God, that is the goal. That is the objective. You know what the goal over here is? That I should attach myself to you, God. I should feel dependent on you. I should turn to you and ask you for help and for assistance. Why? So that I can feel that sense of dependence on you and so I can come back to you and ask you for help and for assistance. Incredible. Says the Malbim. During this time of year, well, he doesn't say this, but I'm going to add it. During this time of year, we feel such dependence. We should feel such dependence on Kaddish Baruch Hu. We realize how much is at stake. We turn to him and we ask Kaddish Baruch Hu to please allow us the opportunity to return to you. Allow us to help us, assist us in our quest to engage in a process that will hopefully be real and genuine and sincere of tshuva. We ask Kaddish Baruch Hu for success, for health, for prosperity in the year ahead. And so therefore, hopefully, we feel a genuine sense of not just connection to him, and not just faith in God, but dependence on him. But says the Malbim, don't forget, the real goal, the real objective is just that, just that feeling. We want to be able to turn to God and to say, Hashem, please help me so that I can come to the realization that I need you and I can come back to you and turn to you again for help and for assistance. So beautiful, says the Malbim. Kaveh al Hashem, David Melech calls to us and he says, Have hope, have faith in God. Chazak v'yameitz libecha, Hashem should help us and should assist us in being able to put our faith and our strength in Him. Why? V'kaveh al Hashem, so that I can then come back and redouble my efforts and strengthen my relationship with Him. What an incredible, incredible daily reminder from the very beginning of the season that we're going to be asking for many, many things. There are many things that we're looking for. There are many different hopes and expectations and, 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 and burning desires that we have for success and for Hatzlacha and for divine assistance. But let us not forget, the goal of all of this is V'kavei El Hashem. We start Kavei El Hashem, we ask for what we need, Chazak but ultimately, we hope that when we end up, we come back to where we started. V'kavei El Hashem. I think this is incredible. I think it's a beautiful insight into a Pasuk. It does hopefully spill over into the entire Perak of Tehillim, which can and should influence the attitude that we bring each and every day throughout the month of Elul and month of, much of the month of Tishrei. I hope that you have found this equally inspiring and that when we say this Pasuk, uh, not necessarily together, because we're davening at bliss, different places, different times, but as we say this Pasuk collectively, as members of Klai Yisrael over the next month, let us remember what the true goal is of this beautiful, glorious, and transformational season. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful, 